Well, good evening. God bless you this evening, and God keep you this evening. Uh, thank you for tuning on me once again. Praise God. That's why I be like trying to just smile, just keep my joy. This is always trying to be cheerful, even though, you know, even things when it don't even seem right, don't even, you know, you try to, I mean, the devil just try to mess up your day. You know, sometimes you be like try to still keep your joy, keep your smile, and be cheerful and everything. You know, because trouble don't always last, and bad things don't always last. And, you know, I know you have sometimes your good days, your bad days, and, you know, it's like whatever you want to make out of it. You know, you want to, you know, make your day be all messed up and mad. Let somebody mess up your day. You just want to keep your joy. No matter what, just keep your joy and be happy. At least try. You know, you try your best. You know, but I know it's, every day is not happy. You know, it may seem like it with me. I just know every day is not happy, but, you know, it's like when I talk to you or tune on, uh, do my YouTube, it's like, I just feel joy. I mean, I just have to smile and just be happy that I'm doing this thing, you know, because it's all good. It's good news. And I was trying to uh, uh, be cheerful as well as being a cheerful giver, too, at the same time. But anyway, God bless you. I just want to share yeah, my Bible way well, over here. I want to um, share with you, um, you know, talking about Paul's uh, final advice. And um, it also talks about fi uh, Paul's final ingredients and talks about ingredients from Paul's. And it talks about there's only one good news. And it also talks about Paul's message come. Uh, chapter 13, I'm starting with verse 1. It said, This is the third time I am coming to visit you. And as the scripture says, the fact of every case must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. I have already warned those who had been sinning when I was there on my second visit. Now I, uh, it says, Now I again warn them and all others, just as I did before. The next time I will come spare them. I will give you all the proof you want that Christ speak through me. Christ is not weak. When he deals with you, he, he is powerful among you. Although he was crucified in weakness, he now lives by the power of God. We too are weak, just as Christ was, but when we deal with you, we will be alive with him and will have God's power. I think I said that before. You know, God will have all power. He wanted to have, you know, power too. Praise God, which come from God. Uh, verse 5 says, Examine yourself to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourself. Truly you know that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. As you test yourself, I hope you will recognize that we have not failed the test of apostolate, uh, apostolate, apostolate authority. It says, we pray to God that you will not do what is wrong by refusing our, our, uh, our correction. It says, we pray to God that you will not do what is wrong by refusing our correction. I hope we want need to demonstrate our authority when we arrive. Do the right thing before we come. Even if that makes it look like we have failed to demonstrate our authority. For we cannot oppose the truth but must always stand for the truth. We are glad to seem weak if it helps show that you are actually strong. We pray that you will become mature. I am writing this to you before I come, hoping that I won't need to deal severally with you when I do come. For I want to use the authority the Lord has given me to strengthen you, not to tear you down. And the next verse talks about Paul's final greeting. In verse 11 it says, Dear brothers and sisters, I close my letter with these last words be joyful 
grow to maturity, encourage each other, not talk about somebody, not talk down about them, but encourage them. Even, even sometimes, you know, you can try to encourage somebody, even to be the truth, but you try to encourage somebody, sometimes they get mad. And just like some, pe some people in church, the preacher correct them, uh, the preacher tell them something, but they're not doing what's right. And then they get mad, they want to run the church, they want to run away from the church, they want to stop going to that church and find another church. They stop going because they got maybe offended. You know, a, a, a preacher or a teacher told them something that they probably didn't want to hear. And then all of a sudden, you know, really might be trying to encourage them, but they took it wrong. You know, when you take it wrong, a lot of times, you know, you take it stuff, you know, it's immature. You know, when you come mature, then nothing won't bother you. It's like somebody can say whatever they want to say you. You try to encourage you, whatever it is, you know, and that's the one even bother. You won't run for another show. You won't stop going. You won't even stop going because of that person that made you mad or ticked you off. Because you, you become matured, you know, in, into maturity in that, you know, place, in that situation, whatever it is. Praise God. But I can see, I mean, I see a lot of people leave church and they get offended with something because some pastor said something or made some kind of remorse and everything. Just like me, they probably, people probably thought I left. You know, see they refuse because, of, like, like I said on my YouTube, but I believe I blocked it off because, you know, a lot of people, uh, they commented on stuff when they wasn't even there. You wasn't there when the man said what he said to me and made these comments. But that ain't what drove me away from the church. You know, things happened in my life and everything. I would still be still going there. Praise God. If I was still in California, I'd still be going to a city refuge. You know, regardless of what uh, Bishop Lord Jones said or whatever comment, I'd still be going there. But I was just making a point. That's why I shared with you all, you know, what was said. But, you know, you hear about things, what he's what's going on with him and these females, what he's doing and all this stuff. But I was nationwide, CNN, everybody else know. Everybody want to try to pinpoint it on me and watch me. You know, I'm not, I'm not on CNN, I'm not on the news, I'm not sleeping around and all this stuff just because I'm single. I'm not doing these things, sleeping with friends and all this crazy stuff going on with what the world do. You know, but I, you know, at the same time, you know, I mean, that's not what moved, that's what, that wasn't the issue that moved me from there. You know, the other issue I think I shared with you on the YouTube, what the issue was, but I'm just making a point here, you know, about how people live, you know, they get to hear and stuff. You know, I knew this lady... She had told me the uh, pastor told her, uh, don't come to this church no more because she wasn't paying enough tithe. You know, I'm like, that's wrong. I mean, that's even the wrong thing to say. He told her not to come there no more. You know, I'm like, he's like, you're not welcome no more. He said, told her, you can get your nail done, you can get your hair done, but you won't give more money to the Lord. You know, I'm like, God not even tripping off that, you know, so he's tripping off that, you know, how much money he give you there. I mean, I know that's not God telling him to say all them things. That he's out wanting for himself. That's why he's, that's why you have to watch out for these preachers and teachers. They be wanting for themselves, and they try to use God in that. Well, you ain't giving enough, you know, you, you I mean, you know, don't come to the church no more. God didn't tell you. God, God didn't tell him to say that. Don't come to this church no more because you're not giving enough time and offer. That's crazy. But anyway, I, yeah, she left the church. She didn't go back. She did. I'm like, that is so wrong. I mean, you should have told them all, I'm going to pray for you. You know, I mean, I, I was, well, let me leave that alone. But I had told her, you know, he need prayer. I said he he, he was very wrong for that. That's why he could be ministers and preaching, have call, I mean, have your own church, whatever, you know. That doesn't mean you perfect. That doesn't mean you're always going to be right because you have your own church. That doesn't give you the right to say these things to hurt somebody else's feeling because of what you want her to pay or what you want her to give for you or whatever, you know. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with her getting her nails done and nothing wrong with all that. She still paid her tithe and offering, you know. And, you know, people are just so greedy. I don't care who it is, preaching minutes. I don't care who it is. Some people are just greedy. You do not know it. And God, God said pay 10% of your offering. And that's what she was doing. So, if God, you know, is in a book, 10% of your, you know, offering, what, you know, what you get, whatever amount, whatever you get paid and everything, 10% of your income, basically. Yes, all you want is 10%. You keep the 90. He wants 10%. That's it. You know, she did. She was doing her point, her part. You know, if somebody tell you, well, you ain't giving enough, but you get your nails done, that's wrong. That is totally wrong. But anyway, I'm going to finish reading here. Um... Uh, it says, uh, it says, I'm writing this to you before I come, hoping that I won't need to deal several, with several with you when I do come. For I want to use the authority the Lord has given me to, me to strengthen you, not to tear you down. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, I close my letter with these last words. Be joyful, grow to maturity, encourage each other, not tear them down.
encourage each other. Praise God. That's what it say. Well, that's what Paul was doing. You know, his father would agree to it. Was to encourage each other. And I'm pretty sure that's what God wanted to do. Encourage each other. Praise God. Um, it says, May the grace of the Lord, Jesus Christ, the Lord, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Praise God. And it said, Live in harmony and peace. Then the God of love and peace will be with you. And um, uh, Galatians chapter 1, verse 1, it talks about greeting from Paul. It said, this letter is from Paul, an apostle that was not appointed by any group of people or any human authority, but my Jesus Christ himself and by God the Father who raised Jesus from the dead. All the brothers and sisters here join me in sending this letter to the churches. Uh, it says in verse 3, it says, May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Jesus gave his life for our sin, just as God our Father planned in order to rescue us from this evil world in which we live. All glory to God forever and ever. Amen. All glory. Give God all the glory. Hallelujah. All glory to God. In verse 6, you know, it talks about there is only one good news. It talks about in verse 6, it says, I am shocked that you are turning away so soon from God. You know how people, that's like I said, how people leave the church and everything, you know, don't even know what they're blessing. It could be closer to what they what they think. You know, they're leaving, they're running. Don't even know, um, you know, they're turning away so soon from God. Too soon, so soon. You're running, from, you're running, to the, you're running in the wrong direction. You running left, and God's trying to uh, get you to run right. Be righteous with Him. Praise God. It says, uh, "We call you to Himself through the loving mercy of Christ. You are following a different way that pretend to be the good news, but it's not the good news at all. And like I just said, you run to the left, you you run to something else that's not good. You're not running what's right. You're not doing what's right. You're running in the wrong." The wrong direction. It's like, where you going? Where you running to? You're running the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. And God is the righteous. He wants you to come right. Come go make that right. Come back right with Him. Praise God. He said, You are being fooled by those who deliberately twist the truth concerning Christ. You know, a lot of you hear like, the world twisting the truth about Christ. They say, You this, you that. Or they call y'all kind of name out of the book that they make fun and. And, and different names off the Bible, you know, and then they want to pinpoint you this, you that, you know, uh, or you Jezebel, or you this, you that. Well, you were in the Bible too, you know, uh, Jose, you were in the Bible too, uh, Mark, and Matthew, Isaiah, and John, you were in the Bible too, James. Hallelujah, you in here too. Praise God. But, um, you know, um, just, just twisting stuff around, twisting the truth concerning Christ. Um, uh, Verse 8 says, Let God curse fall on anyone, including us, or even an angel from heaven, who preaches a different kind of good news. Then the one we preach to you, I say again, that we have said before, if anyone preaches any other good news, then one, you welcome. Let the person be cursed. Obviously, I am not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goals, I would not be Christ's servant. And that's also in the book of Romans chapter 2, verse 29. That's why I'm like, I'm not a people's pleaser. I got to please God. You know, it's about God. It's about Jesus. You know, somebody died for my sins. Somebody woke me up this morning. The people didn't wake me up. The people didn't provide for me. The people wasn't there through my uh, heartaches and pains or whatever I was going through. The people wasn't there for me when I was... uh uh. About to get kicked out, got evicted or whatever, you know, homeless. The people didn't help me and, and you know, uh, knock on my van door and tell me you need a place to stay. I got to make some room here for you. The people didn't do none of that for me. God made a way for me. Praise God. Um, verse 11 says, uh, Dear brothers and sisters, I want to, he says, I want you to understand that the gospel message I preach is not based on 
mere human season. I received my message from no human source, and no one taught me. Instead, I received it by directly revelation from Jesus Christ. You know what I was like when I followed the uh, it said the Jewish some of the Jewish religion. How I violently persecuted God's church. I did my best to destroy it. I was far ahead of my fellow Jews in the zeal for the tradition of my ancestors. In verse 15 said, But even before I was born, God chose me and called me by his marvelous grace. Then it pleased him to reveal his son to me so that I would proclaim the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles. To the Gentile, anybody else, praise God. <laughs> it says, uh, when this happened, I did not rush out to consult with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to consult with those who were apostles before I was. Instead, I went away into Arbion, Arbia, it says, and later I returned to the city of Demetrius. And that's also in the book of... Uh, Matthew chapter 15 verse 2 verse 18 says then three years later I went to Jerusalem to get to know Peter and I stayed with him for 15 days the the he said the only other apostles I met at the time was James the Lord brother I declare before God that what I am writing to you is not a lie in verse 21 says, After that visit, I went north into the province of Syria, Syria and uh, Cilicia, and still the Christians in the church in Judah didn't know me personally. That's why I said it's not about uh, uh, this uh, tradition and all this religious stuff. It's about a relationship, a relationship with God, knowing Him personally. Knowing him on one on one, one on one, when you know you don't just have to talk to God on one on one without nobody around, just just a personal relationship with God. Praise God! Somebody that really know you. When people think they know you, you know you can be like, I changed from all. I'm not like that no more. And they still want to judge in your past. God knows you. You know you ain't got to prove to the world. You ain't got to prove to the people. Cause God already knows you. You got that personal thing with God. He knows you. You ain't got to prove to nobody. Cause God already knows you. Praise God. Um, uh, verse 23 says, And they knew was the people were saying, The one who used to pro prosecute us is now preaching the very faith. He tried to destroy, and they praised God because of me. Praise God. And that's what, that's what it said. That's what the Paul message come from Christ. There's a bar I read about there is only one good news, and this was about greetings from Paul. Out of Galatians chapter 1. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for the Galatians. Thank you, Lord, for Paul. Thank you, Lord, what he went through, what he said. Somebody else doing it right now today. Hallelujah. It ain't got to be Paul. It could be somebody else's name. It could be Ricky or Richard. It could be Tracy or Sandy. Praise God. The word is the word. Hallelujah. And the world is powerful. The same word back then, whatever Paul, whoever else went it, went through and said the word and made a greeting and told them greetings, you know, the same can be with each and every last one of us, individual. Praise God. And God got to, God know who he need to use, who he want to use to spread the news, good news. Praise God. I want to read our mother book here. Uh, it says, the secret of achievement is to not let what you're doing get to you before you get to it. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 3 says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Most people wish to serve God, but only in their advisory capacity. First Peter chapter 5 verse 6 says, Humble yourself, therefore under the mighty hands of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Not your time, not my time, but in due time, on his time. Praise God. Consense, conscience is God's built-in warning system. Be very happy when it hurts you. Be very worried when it doesn't. 
you're not supposed to worry at all but <laughs> i'm just reading the book and then i'm giving you the book of the bible what you know what you can read and you know what it say actually what it's saying acts chapter 24 verse 16 says and here in do i exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense towards god and towards men most men forget god all day and ask him to remember them at night Psalm 55 verse 17 says, Even in the morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 9 says, If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. The measure of a man's character is not what he gets from his ancestors, but what he leaves his descendants. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 22 says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children, children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Although the tongue wakes very little, few people are able to hold it. James chapter 3 verse 5 says, Even so the tongue is a little member, and boosts great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindles. Um, should you never let advisory get you down, except on your knees. James chapter 5 verse 13 says, if any one of you in trouble, he should pray. Pray. If you in trouble, you're supposed to pray before you even get in that trouble. Pray anyway. Don't wait till trouble come. Pray before trouble happens. That way you have already, you'd be already set. Whether you know it or not, you'd be already set. Just pray before the things even happen. Glory be to God. Don't wait till things happen. Then you want to pray or want somebody to pray for you. do them things before. Pray to God. He says, he who, he says, he who wants milk should not sit on a stool in the middle of the pasture expecting the cow to back up to him. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 4 says, he becoming poor that dealt it with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent make it rich. I'm going to read this last one here. It says, the best pride between hope and despair is often a good night's sleep. And Psalm 127 verse 2 says, It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. So you make sure you get you some sleep. And if you're going to get up early, at least you give up get up early and get some God, give God some praise, and get up early to pray. Get up early, get in the world of God, get in the world to spread the good news. If you're going to get up early, but just getting up early, looking around, trying to see who's going to, uh, to work or who's leaving out the house, or you looking out the window to see what they're doing. I mean, it's up. You know, that's what basically what it's saying. I mean, I, like I said, I think I told you, shared this, you know, with you before in my other video. I used to be a security guard. And um, that's my job to be up, <laughs> to be up to watch everything, you know, walk the parking lot and, you know, uh, sign in visitors, whatever, watch the monitor and all of so that's my job to be up to watch, you know, make sure everything is fine. And, um, and these people, these people just like, they just come down, they just sit in the lobby, you know, it'd be like one or two o'clock in the morning. And it can be really before two o'clock in the morning. It'd be like from, it could be like. I can say like from 2 p.m. all the way until the next morning, like 2 or 3 in the morning. And I'd be like, you don't try to go to your apartment. You know, y'all up, y'all up, doing nothing. Go to sleep. Go to bed. What are you, what you, you're not going to miss nothing. They're not going to miss a doggone thing. I mean, these some of the people, you know, they, they kind of old. They was kind of old. This one lady, she was about in her 80s. A little bit over 80. But, you know, it's like she looking good to be 80. You know, she, you know, had a strip and everything. Praise God. But. You know, she was just up. Didn't want to be in her room. You know, she was just, I mean, some people are scared they're going to die. want to be around somebody, you know. But, 
When you get down, you don't you don't think about some things. You don't you don't fear enough. You don't be having them crazy thoughts in your head when you got God. So apparently she didn't have God, but you know she was just all always up. That's what they were saying here. It was like what I just read. You know, I mean, you just up, get you some sleep. It said it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow for you. So he gave it his beloved sleep. It's like go get some sleep. You know, go to you not you know go to bed. Go to your apartment. Go to your room. You know, I mean, try to you try to respect your elder, but at the, at the same time, you know, this is my job. I know what I need to do at the same time. You know, that's why I'm, that's why I'm gonna have to stay up. You know, this is my job. Eight hours, nine hours, there, do what I gotta do. Wait for the next shift, whatever. Now I'm, then I'm going to bed when I get home off work. You know, and um, it's like they just I mean all the time. I mean, constantly, every single time I go to work, is every constantly kind. You can't make them, you can't tell them, you can't tell the people what to do. But at the same time, you just like it's, it's in vain to do them things, but they do. And when they do go to bed, they get up early, early in the morning to watch and see who's going out the door, who's going to work, what they're looking like, who they're going with, what time they're going, and what time. I mean, just up doing nothing. So they're not up giving God some praise, they're not up praying. You know, they know that I listen to my church. They know I look, I read my Bible when I get a chance. You know, everybody says peace and quiet, or whatever. Yeah, they know what I do. You know, the people that was always seeing me there coming to work. I mean, I was, I was listening to my church, and they heard it. And you know, I'm not. It wasn't just on Sunday. It was just all the time. See, they never didn't know who I was. You know, inside, see, they wouldn't buy what I heard, what I hear, but they didn't really know me. But you know, I mean, it's like if you don't get up early, once you give God and pray, pray. You know, one for another, not just talking about one another, trying to, you know, see who's who. Yeah, they had that on yesterday. Well, they had that on another day. Yeah, I seen her with him. You know, all this this, this drama stuff, you know. And most of, most of the time, these people be really old, older, you know. I mean, up in age, old. I mean, just like, I mean, like, we have anything to do. Just go to bed. Go to your, go to your room. Go give God some pray. Go pray. I mean, like, go somewhere to myself, you know. But my job was, was not to tell them to go to their room so that my job was to make sure everything is fine, they not falling down or they're not hurting themselves or something like that, you know, but, you know, no fires or nobody breaking their fall, you know, but signing in and all business, making sure nobody, you know, wasn't supposed to be there, wasn't supposed to be there, wasn't supposed to be there, stuff like that, you know, but it was just crazy. I'm like, wow, that's why I was just reading this and it made me think when I used to be a security guard, was that, over six years ago. And I'm like, wow, this made me think that, you know, the people just up, just up, get rising up early, just to do nothing, sit around and look, just look so they can run them off the top. I mean, just looky lose. I'm like, wow, that is that was I mean, I haven't seen nothing like that in my life. I really haven't, you know. I'm like, wow, this is this is crazy. <laughs> but anyway, God bless you and God keep you and um thank you for tuning on me once again. As always, I'm praying for each and every last one of you. And um God is good, he's awesome, he's awesome, he's awesome. And sometimes God can put you in the workplace to show you how people are something that you probably haven't seen before or, you know, i 'cause I'm like you know, it's like I always say, you're never too old to learn, you're never too old to you know you know, you're never too old to learn either. You know, it's like I don't know everything, but I know what I know. But there's a whole lot I ain't seen before, there's a whole lot I don't maybe I don't know, you know, from people, how they are. I mean, I know well the majority how they are, but other than that it's like Wow, it's like they get up early, older than it was, and how they be acting. I'm like, wow, this older lady, she was just telling somebody, I mean, just cussing, just, just flouncing her dress. I mean, older she was. I mean, older, she, I don't know if she lived with her now, just no, doing that time she was 80, 82, 83. But she was just acting like a kid, flouncing her dress, trying to shake it, and all this, and then cussing people all and I mean, like, that stuff was cute. It got grandkids and everything, you know, it's not even, that's not even a good example for your own grandkids, you know, they see your grandmother flouncing at 80 something years old, I mean, good, you got the strength, you got the exercise, but use that, you know, use all the energy for Jesus, you know, go to the house of the Lord, you can give God some praise wherever you are, not doing all that worldly, worldly stuff, shaking it, you know, and, and, and showing off, that's not, that's not good, you know, all this you are, you know, come on, now you gotta be better than that. You know, your grandkids, you know, stuff not cute. Then you wonder why these little kids, little girls, and all this stuff shake today, you know, and, and and all this crazy stuff. That stuff is not cute at all. It's really not. But anyway, God bless you all, and God keep you all. I just have to pray, pray, pray for them all. I mean, y'all can 
you know, sometimes you can mention how folks is, how people are, but at the same time, you know, I can say things, but at the same time, I, I still pray for them. I really do. I pray for them. You know, I'm about to share it with you, you know, what I experienced, what I've seen, and something like that, you know, but it's just not in that place, you know, it could be, I mean, I've seen just, I mean, all kinds of stuff, you know, it's just like, wow, that is really too old for that, you know, grandmothers and everything, how you just sit there and set the uh, example for your grandkids, literally, you know, little grandkids, stuff is not cool, cool at all, at all, period, you know, I don't have no grandkids, I thank God for so my kids, I ain't, I'm not ready to be no grandmother, that's not 48 years old, I'm not ready to be no grandmother, and I'm not no grandmother, I told mine, when I was, I see some grandmothers in their 30, probably they 28, 29, I don't know, they may be 30, uh, 31, 32 with grandmother. I don't know, but younger than me. And they already grandmother, not me. I think God, I'm not a grandmother. Yeah, I'm like, you wait till I have it going on. You wait till I get rich. Wait till I get in my 70. <laughs> Praise God. Wait till I get in my 70, shoot, or something like that, shoot. Uh, right now, I'm too young to be a grandmother. I'm, mm -mm. I'm, I'm praying on that. Praise God. I'm not no grandmother. I thank you, Jesus, cause I'm, I'm, because I'm going to be the one that takes care of your kids. And I know y'all ain't ready yet. You know, you don't need no kids. Y'all don't need no kids. Y'all life ain't ready. Your life ain't straight. Dog, I don't want you to make the same mistake. What well, I went through when I was young, praise God. I mean, I, I, mean, I stayed with mine. I took care of mine. But I'm saying for y'all, how y'all living? Y'all busy y'all trying to put that on me. Watch my kid. I'm like, no, I don't know. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Ain't nothing wrong with having but I'm too young. Praise God. I mean, I don't want none. Praise God. And I spoke them words. When I was in my early 30s, I spoke them words. I don't want to be no grandma, y'all. So I'm letting y'all know you can't go out with no boy, no boyfriend. And I go for my boy, too. Don't, don't, don't mess with no girls. Don't mess with them girls. You ain't finna marry them. You know, if you ain't finna be a man and stand up like a man and be that one woman, don't mess around. I'm telling you. You know, I ain't trying to be no grandparent. Yet no, in my 30s and, you know, early 40s, whatever, sure. I don't think so, praise God, and I'm not. To this day, I am not no grandmother. My oldest, is, my son is 31 years old. I got a 29-year-old. I got a 24-year-old, and my baby, she's 17 years old, praise God. All that stuff ain't happening. And to y'all, y'all got to live right. First of all, I mean, I'm trying to tell you, I prayed on that. If I had the soul seed, I did what I did. And I'm not one. I rebuke all that, Jesus, man, I refuse. I'm mean, listening to these, these uh, women that are younger than me. 40s and 42 and 43 years old and one is 39. I'm like, your grandmother 39? <laughs> yeah, girl. I'm like, this. I'm like, oh, okay, well, well, I'm not no grandma. I'm letting, I'm just listening to theirs and listening and then I'll be like, have a babysit my my daughter acting. You know, she is. She, I'm like, I don't want to go through all that. I thank my Jesus. I thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, I'm like, uh, uh. Y'all ain't gonna take care of y'all. You ain't ready. Your life ain't ready. And I see that. You, you don't need none, and, and I'm not going to watch no kid. I watch mine. I took care of mine. I'm not going to watch somebody else. I want you need to watch your own when that time comes. And right now, y'all not ready. I tell my kid, get your education. Go to school. Get your education. Don't go through what I went through. You know, have to, you know, stop going to school. Have to do that. Have to stop doing that. You know, just to watch your own kid. You know, don't trust anybody watching the kid going through all this stuff. Just get your education. Get a good job. Where, I mean, focus on that. Get your life together. Get Jesus in your life, first of all. That way, you know, you be already set for that person or whatever. Y'all be on the same level, God level. And that's it. That one man, that that that, that just one man with one baby daddy, just that one baby mama. Don't do what I went through. Don't do what the rest. Don't do what the rest of the world do. Other than that, get you together. That's it. I'm having all this baby and all this kind of, you think it's going to keep a man and, and a man sometimes do that too. Think they're going to keep a woman and all this. It just don't happen. Don't work like that. A person going to do what they want to do anyway. They're going to go. You're going you're gonna to have a kid. They can move on. That's not going to make a man stay with you because you have a baby with him. That's not going to make a lady stay with you because you have a baby with him. Do the right thing. Don't go. Don't do what I went through. Praise God. I mean, I taught mine, told mine what to do was right. Don't go. I don't want you to live and go into that line, that road where I went through when I was young. Be better than that. They want you to be better than me when it came when it comes to that. And so far, I just prayed, I just prayed, I prayed. I just, you know, Lord, I ain't ready to be. I'm not ready to go be no grandma. I'm too young, Lord. You know, if I got to show my soul, my seed, do what I have to do. And praise God, I'm 40 years old and I'm still not a grandma. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
until they get ready. I know right now they're not ready to get your education. Praise God. Do something that makes sense. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anyway, God bless you all. Any Father, pray for those watching. God bless you and God keep you. I pray Lord be with you and lead you and guide you and strengthen you and protect you in every area of your life. And I rebuke every sickness and every disease right now. And I just pray that the Lord would just heal and touch right where you hurt, right heal and hurt and touch right where you pain. If you going through something, I don't know what you're going through. It may not be sickness. It might be no pain. It might not be. It might not be uh, no uh, sickness going on with your body, but you may know somebody, and I just pray the Lord just touch and heal them and touch them where they hurt, where they pain in Jesus' name, and by His stripes they are healed, and you is healed too. If you believe, glory be to God. You may not be in no pain. You might have a mind brain pain, a mix up, something going on with your mind. You can't get your mind straight or your mind made up with something. I pray in the name of Jesus, you would just have a one track, solid mind that you can just think straight and do the right thing in your life. In Jesus' name, I pray. There's nothing works without God. And I pray you would get yourself together, get in order, and get in line. In Jesus' name. I mean, I know you fall short, but you don't fall down. Don't fall out. When you get back in order and Christ Jesus and do your do and don't worry about the don't you know you may be bent sometime but you know glory be to god you're not broken glory be to god get yourself in order get them bones back in order get them bones back straight and back moving and back on track glory be to god god bless you and god keep you in jesus name i pray each and every last one you have a wonderful night blessed night or blessed morning when you get up in the morning praise god to give god the thanks and the glory yeah, all the time, not just because on certain days, but every day in Jesus' name. Be thankful for what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have. Just be thankful for what you got right now. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you and your family in Jesus' name. And have a great night's sleep. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. To sleep with nothing on your mind. Sleep, sleep, sleep well. Praise God. Keep the good news in your mind. Keep the good news in your heart. Keep the good news in your life. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God is an awesome God. He's awesome. He's awesome. He's worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. And not just on Sundays. I mean every day. Just worthy to be praised. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And thank you all once again for tuning on me once again. Tune in on me once again, as always. God bless you and God keep you. Stay strong. Do the right thing. You know, be positive. Encourage somebody. You know, sometimes, you know, people don't want to hear the truth. But, you know, pray for them. And, you know, and just, just speak the good news at all times. You know, tell them what they need to hear. Not what they want to hear, but they need to hear, which is the truth. You know, and, um, and the truth will set you free, praise God, which is the word of God. Being real. Read for yourself. Praise God. You know, not just reading and being listening, but also do it. You have to do the will of God. You have to live by the word of God. In Jesus' name, yes, you do. Glory be to God. Anyway, God bless and God keep you. And remember, God love you and so do I. Until next time, you take care and have a blessed night. In Jesus' name, see you later. If God say the same.